Yeah, thank you, uh, Namrata. Uh, I think we had a, such a nice uh, discussion on outcomes of uh, smile surgery, right from a clinical outcome to a molecular label, and that justifies people shifting to smile. And I know that uh, laser application is better than a mechanical or a microkeratom uh, uh, treatment for a cornea. But uh, one of the important thing is surgically things should be simple so that we don't create uh, much problem for these uh, cases. So if you see these uh, uh, smile surgeries that does have its own uh, issues uh, if you begin with uh, uh, as a learner in these cases. So we know that there are three simple steps for smile surgery. First would be a, a appropriate proper docking of uh, applicator to the cornea. And second is a laser application to create the refractive stromal lenticule, intrastromal lenticule for these cases. And the most important thing subsequently is the manual lenticle dissection and extraction of the refractive lenticle, which we have created. So there are five or six steps in lenticular extraction, which are important. The first one is identifying, then opening the capsite cut. I think this is one of the most important steps to uh, assess how deep, how superficial you are to create the lenticule edge. That is by doing an anterior and posterior channel uh, dissection to the, that will create the lenticular edge for your subsequent dissection for anterior plane. Then subsequently going deeper for a lenticule bed dissection. So these four important steps are there to get you to a lenticule which could be extracted safely by various techniques. And after you extract, you need to inspect the lenticule for its completeness, especially in a difficult cases. So these are very simple steps, which is not going to make huge uh, difference in terms of a timing of a surgery in these cases, as uh, nicely described by Dr. Grewal, comparing the LASIK and SMILE in these cases. Let me show these uh, small uh, clips of video to show how effectively we can do. The first is the application of femtosecond laser to create this intrastomal lenticule. You can see that we have created the uh, side cut now. Now we'll be uh, creating the cap, which is uh, coming from center to periphery. And entire procedure takes uh, 22 to 28 seconds, depending on a uh, laser uh, energy in these cases. So this is what I was saying. So you have a two clear cut margins. One is the cap, one is the lenticule side. And this is the incision, which is important to be highlighted. So what I do normally, I'll put a gentle massage on the incision size to delineate the, both the rings clearly. Then go gently from left to right. Make sure you are properly into the incision. Then I do an anterior pocket. So this is a two millimeter incision. Then go towards my right hand side to create a posterior pocket. So I have both the pockets now. Then take a dissector, which normally you can see this. I have clearly delineated my posterior edge. So this is what I have to clarifying the lenticular edge, which is so important. Go anteriorly towards the left hand side, avoiding the edge we have created the, towards the right hand side. Make sure you have a smoother dissection into the pupillary area. This is very important. And you can see how if this is a left eye. Many people do have a little different left eye towards the right hand side. Now I go posteriorly. So see how effectively I'm doing. I'll delineate the edge here. One, I release here. Leave little attachment to the side so that you have a fulcrum to dissect completely. If you dissect out from one side, the entire flap or lenticle goes to one side and becomes very difficult to dissect out. So I have a complete dissection now. You can just roll in, make a, a little bit of a gola and take it out. You, can, you don't require a faucet nowadays to remove this uh, lenticule. So you saw that steps are very simple. It does depend on how effectively laser has been delivered and how easily you can make the lenticle as visible by anterior and posterior dissection. That is the most important step in a dissection of lenticule. This is our uh, review article on uh, lenticle extraction techniques in uh, clinical ophthalmology, in which there are various uh, description of various techniques to uh, dissect and remove the lens lenticle from the bed. So there's a chung swing technique where he does a posterior plane dissection first, then subsequently it comes to anterior and dissect out. So this is a simple technique, but there's already a risk of lenticular tear, side cut extension, and retention of a uh, lenticle also is possible in this technique. Then people do a continuous calvinular 
lenticular excess technique also where they do anterior plane dissection first, then hold the lenticule from the edge and do a rexus type of technique uh, to remove the entire lenticule without doing the posterior dissection in these cases. So this has a potential risk of a, a lenticule tear, partial uh, extraction of a lenticule sometime. Extension of a side cut is very, very common in this technique. Lenticular sizes where again, they do a little bit of a peeling off from the uh, incision side, then hold the entire edge and do a uh, cir circumferential man manipulation to do the entire lenticule in these cases. Then people do a lenticle irrigation where they use BSS injected uh, through a small incision to identify the anterior posterior plane, then remove the lenticule uh, by forceps. Or people do a anterior posterior dissection, use hydro expression without using the uh, forceps in these cases. Then push up technique where they use an incision like a Y shaped incision, which we use in a cataract surgery sometime to push the edge and make the edge visible. Then subsequently you can extract the uh, entire lenticle in these cases. We have also used intraop optical or coherent tomography, IOCT microscope to delineate the plane in difficult cases and subsequently uh, dissect appropriately in these cases. Sequential segmental dissection can also be done from the anterior plane, then removing them uh, nicely in these cases. So as I said, uh, all these techniques are there, but you have to get used to one technique which is simple and effective for your cases. Learning curve is always there. You do have a difficulties, which will be covered subsequently by another speaker. Suction laws do a, a cap side cut tear in these cases do happen. But as you graduate to more cases, your complications, difficulties go down significantly from a 16% to 2% in a 50 first cases of yours. So let me just tell you what all things can happen in lenticular dissection. Just simplifying in this diagram here, you have done an appropriately, correctly anterior dissection first, but you find difficulty in going posteriorly. Or you have entered directly posteriorly in these cases, then you struggle to find another posterior layer. In that process, you can damage the stoma in these cases. So once you have this difficulty of identification, that's going to give you more challenges. You can have retained lenticule, delayed the visual recovery because of a lot of stomal manipulations, cap tear, side cut tear extension, posterior stomal damage, epithelial defect, especially towards the cap side cut area and can induce uh, irregular articulation sometimes. The incidence is quite less. You have a various ways to look into that area, anti segment OCT or Sinske hook or various other instruments can uh, give you a delineation in these cases. OCT gives you a nice picture. Like one of this case, I had difficulty. This is one of the first case of mine where I had uh, cap lenticular addition so I was going posteriorly to damage the posterior stoma while the, it was attached to the cap. So antisegment OCT in difficult situation can be really helpful in these cases. Just one uh, small video here uh, where I, I did a correct uh, dissection, right, from a, a right hand side to left hand side to open the incision area, then do an anterior dissection, then go posteriorly to do a posterior dissection towards the right hand side, which is a normal uh, feature in these cases. So this is what I'm trying to do a posterior dissection. Subsequently, I have done an anterior dissection in this particular case. But after anterior dissection, I've done completely, I was struggling to see the posterior dissection. You can see here, I can't go posteriorly. So what exactly uh, went wrong to begin with that you have to analyze. You must see your videos subsequently also. And you can uh, rectify your steps in these cases. So if you see here, I was initially dissecting, I had gone posteriorly. You can see this is edge which is delineated. So this is a clear indication I had gone posteriorly. In such cases, you can just enlarge the dissection towards the cap side by uh, reverse side of a uh, dissector. This will make the edge more visible, come towards the incision area so that you can insert or you can put your dissector over the uh, lenticule and gives you a nice uh, dissection anteriorly to the so once you identify this correctly, you can dissect out very effectively in these cases. So it is a edge identification, which is so important for these cases. So this is one more patient. I had a similar difficulty uh, dissecting uh, in this case posteriorly because I had gone posteriorly directly. So what I'm doing here, once you have little bit of fluid here, so it's very difficult. So I have just done anterior dissection. Then I'll show you how I reached the posterior dissection in this particular case here. So I'm again struggling to see a posterior dissection in this particular case, but just observe the area here. So I already have an edge. So 
I'll just go anterior to that and push the entire lenticule towards the central area. Then I have a flap. I'll go anteriorly. And now the section can be simplifiedly, can be uh, delineated and lenticle can be selected by a uh, rotation like a rexis that a task can be taken out. So the main crux here is to do an appropriate clarity of a dissection area at bust. So if you have a good dissection, smooth dissection, this is what uh, a first day picture of a smile patient is. This is the OCT of the same patient here. So meniscus sign, which I described, it's one of the very, very important aspects for a, uh, the edge delineation for an appropriate dissection by your patient. So once you see this line over the dissector, you are in the posterior plane. And if you don't see the line here, you are in the anterior plane. If you understand this, you'll never have difficulty in these cases. This is the algorithm uh, we have made, depending on the type of dissection you make. And uh, once you have a difficulty of uh, getting to a second plane, so either you go push the lenticule towards the uh, center side, that will give you an idea it is anteriorly attached or a posteriorly attached. Accordingly, you can manage subsequently these cases. To summarize, the surgery is simple in a smile cases. You have to understand various techniques. There's a little learning curve compared to elastic patients. And we know that lenticular dissection instruction is the most challenging step intraoperatively for these cases. Multiple complications can happen in a difficult situations. Training, seeing your videos, assisted by an experienced surgeon is very impor important in these cases. And classically, if you can delineate the edge appropriately, like a meniscus sign, things become very, very simple. And this is what I wanted to stress. Always look for a meniscus sign that tells you you are posted daily all the time. Thank you for your kind listening and uh, hope that the subsequent discussion will be appropriate and good for everybody.